Welcome back, Power Tool fans. I've got some breaking tool news for you from Milwaukee. This last Wednesday, they brought a few of us to their headquarters to show us a brand new line of M18 job site vacs and a mountain of accessories. And today, we're allowed to show you what we saw. And while they're cool and packed with unique features that we haven't seen before, that's not the biggest story. If you look really close, you'll see something far more significant just below the surface. Let's go. These are the all new Milwaukee M18 Fuel wet dry vacs. Now these are not the chubby roller bins that we're used to dragging around our shops. These are serious tools aimed directly at job site cleanup. We're talking drywall, concrete, insulation, wood and metal shavings, the big stuff that normally clogs the vacs that you already have. But instead of making one or two different models, Milwaukee made 24, sort of. That brings me to the first unique feature. The entire system is modular. You choose the cart, tank, and motor head specifically for your job. Let me walk you through it. First, let's grab a cart. This is the 0923 wet dry vacuum cart. It has four independently swiveling and locking reinforced casters that promise durability and unmatched mobility on the job site. There's storage for four different accessories and a foot pedal for easily removing the tank. Or you can choose the 0933 premium wet dry vacuum cart with two swiveling casters on the front and two large wheels on the back. Unlike the smaller cart, this one has a three position adjustable push handle that makes it really easy to drag around the site or up and down stairs. It also holds four accessories and has a foot pedal that detaches the tank. Speaking of, we need a tank. Milwaukee is offering us three different options, a six gallon, a nine gallon, and a huge 12 gallon tank. They're all very durable, have large comfortable handles for dumping and a tank drain for easily emptying water. So now that we have a cart and a tank, we get to choose the wet dry vacuum motor head. And this is where things really start to get interesting. The first option is the 0911 M18 fuel three and a half horsepower motor head. It runs off a single M18 battery that produces 87 CFM and 60 inches of liquid lift suction. That single 12 amp hour battery will give you up to 47 minutes of continuous cleaning time and up to 1300 square feet of debris cleanup. Next, we jump up to our first dual battery vac, the 0921 M18 fuel four and a quarter horsepower motor head. Now the dual batteries work together to produce 109 CFM and 77 inches of suction. With two 12 amp hour batteries, this will run up to 49 minutes and cover 1600 square feet of cleanup. Still not enough? Next, we have another dual battery solution, the 0931 M18 fuel six and a half horsepower motorhead, delivering a truly impressive 145 CFM and 88 inches of suction. With two 12 amp hour batteries, the big one will give the same 49 minutes of runtime, but it'll clean up 1800 square feet instead. Now Milwaukee told us they're also going to be offering a corded AC powered motorhead, but didn't have one on hand and sent us no information on it just yet. So when you do the math, two carts times three bins times four motorheads, you get 24 different combinations. And of course, Milwaukee does nothing but heavy duty. And that's pretty obvious in the shared stats. Their casters, wheels, and hoses are all super tough. As I just mentioned, the power is very high. Now they don't have everything we were hoping for. There's no remote control. And of course, we think they're mental for not building pack out cleats into the top or at least mounting points for a pack out mounting plate. So you could turn your M18 vac into the base of your pack out stack. But other than those two gripes, these were pretty awesome vacs. Yet having lots of power and a strong hose doesn't properly attack every job. And that brings us to the second part of the story, accessories. Now Milwaukee isn't messing around here. They showed us six different bags and filters, four adapter kits, five different hoses, and 14 tools and nozzles. That included a round brush, floor brush, wet floor nozzle, crevice tool, floor utility nozzle, bigger round brush, bigger floor nozzle, bigger curved nozzle. All right, you get the idea. Honestly, that would have felt like overkill already, but then they opened up an entirely new room to introduce us to the Milwaukee Air Tip Trade Focus Vacuum Accessories. There were a staggering 19 additional trade specific attachments and each tool had at least one of us saying, finally, that's what I've been waiting for. There's the air tip swiveling palm brush with changeable heads so you can choose the right bristles for the job. And of course, this one felt great in the hand. 
There's the air tip rotating corner brush. Guess what that does? A clever dust catcher that sucks on a drywall to catch your dust or safety goggles, my bad. This is the air tip three in one crevice and brush tool that quickly adapts to the job. There's the air tip conduit line puller, which was pretty freaking genius if you ask me. There's a four in one right angle cleaning tool, a low profile pivoting brush for finished carpenters. You hear that dad? A two in one utility brush tool that's slightly less useful than the three in one we just showed you. There's a flexible long reach crevice tool for flexing and reaching longly into crevices. The air tip pivoting extension wand that extends and pivots. Ross would love that one. A magnetic utility nozzle that picks up metal objects before they tear apart your filters. A few non-marring utility nozzles that promise not to, you know, mar. A cool cross brush tool that allows you to agitate the dust without pushing it away from the hose like the round brushes do. I couldn't help but feel like this one makes their round brushes kind of pointless, but whatever. There were two different air tip rocking utility nozzles that made it easy to pick up the thicker stuff. There's an air tip claw utility nozzle with brushes that gives you the perfect leverage for cleaning carpets in your car. And my personal favorite, the M12 air tip utility nozzle. Now this is a powered brush roll that did a fantastic job of cleaning carpets with a bright row of LEDs to reveal your dirty carpet shame. And it's all powered by its own M12 battery. It's almost like a Milwaukee employee suggested a new M18 vac in a meeting, and one of the executives said, oh, sure, Barry, why not vax? That'll disrupt the status quo. That'll shift some industry paradigms. You should make like 24 of them, then spend $200 million on accessories for every trade. That makes a ton of sense, Barry. Oh, and while you're at it, why not make all this stuff right here in the USA? And unfortunately, either that executive was bad at sarcasm or the entire Milwaukee team was bad at sensing it, so they went ahead and did it. Including that made in the USA part, which is pretty freaking cool if you ask me. But again, not even these awesome accessories are the most significant story. The one thing that we all kept staring at were the batteries. Two M18 12 amp hour batteries. Not working in parallel to extend runtime, but in series. These VACs, just like the Milwaukee M18 mower, are 36 volt tools. These are M36 tools, but they obviously don't want to call them that. So what, you ask? Isn't this a good thing? Well, yes, it most certainly is. It's just that Milwaukee told us several years ago that they would never make a dual battery tool. If I remember correctly, they said that back when they were getting ready to push MX into the market. When we saw the dual batteries in the mower, we were still skeptical. Maybe it was easy to say yes to a dual battery system, but only for OPE, and more specifically, only on a tool with wheels so you don't feel the weight. And of course, you'll notice these VACs are on wheels too. When you put two 12 amp hour M18 batteries on it, you don't struggle to use the VAC at all. But if you put them on a rear handle circular saw, well, then you'd be setting yourself up for a lot of powerful cutting, but a pretty terrible backache. And of course, this hasn't stopped other tool manufacturers. Even Skill just launched this new rear handle, but their biggest battery is only five amp hours. Makita's been doubling up batteries on hand tools forever, but their LXT platform maxes out at only six amp hours. Milwaukee's talked about dual battery setups being cumbersome and bad for ergonomics, and I get that. If they did make an overpowered M18 dual battery, 10 and a quarter inch framing saw, it would be awesome, but if someone put two 12 amp hour batteries on it, it would weigh like 300 pounds. But so what? Can't we all be trusted to put the right battery on the tool we want to use? Yeah, I just, I heard myself say that too. Of course we can, but that can't continue to be the reason. There now exists a solid M18 dual battery 36 volt system, and I think it's time Milwaukee starts using it on more tools. Imagine a 36 volt rocket light with 10,000 lumens, or a 36 volt table saw with a proper 10 inch blade for those month long finishing jobs. Don't try to tell me Milwaukee's 9-inch cutoff saw wouldn't be better with two batteries running in series. Of course, you could also just add crazy runtime to fix tools, like their 12-inch miter saw. So what do you guys think? If Milwaukee let you choose which tool got 36-volt power first, what would it be? Let me know below. So that's it for now. If you have any questions about the new line of M18 fuel vacs and accessories, let me know. And of course, I'll put all the prices in the description. Don't forget to join us this and every Friday for the Power Tool Weekend Review, and this Saturday when we go live at 3 p.m. Eastern and let another one of our channel members pick one of our shelves and take home over $2,000 worth of power tools. I'll see you then.